stimuli. If the dog is hungry. Nerve threshold, if the dog is a nervous dog. So I don't correct ever if my dog is nervous. So, Jolie, you said every time my dog looks away, if I say no, I should correct. I'm like, you should, but you shouldn't have said no in that situation. So I'm at Home Depot, and I say, look, and I'm working on this, and a guy walks by, and my dog is like this. Okay, it disobeyed, look. But that's my least uh, important thing is, I said, look, I don't want my dog nervous around strangers. So I'm not going to correct on that. I'm going to be like, ah, 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 and I'm maybe going to tease my dog. So every rule can be broken to a little bit. That does not make your dog see. So we have something called low drive and medium drive and high drive uh, situations. What's a low drive situation? I'm in the kitchen with my dog. My dog's looking at me. I say plots. That's a low drive plots. What's a medium drive plots? My dog's running around this field. I go plots, and it lays down. That's a medium drive. Now I throw the ball. And the ball stops, and I say, okay, and halfway between me and the ball, I say plots. That's a higher drive exercise before it gets to the ball. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What's even a higher drive? I throw the ball, and as the ball is still rolling, I say plots as the prey continues. That's even a higher drive. So I start off, obviously, into low drive obedience. I call it kitchen obedience. That's easy, and that's how we should start. But too many people stay on obedience, which means they're only working their obedience where? In the kitchen. In the kitchen. And they're like, I can't figure out why my dog's not paying attention on the trial field. I'm like, I'll give you a good reason they haven't. <laughs> because your dog has not learned how to handle stimuli. So you have to be able to go into the world and your dog obey. So I tell people, if your dog has a grasp of the command, with your discretion, start moving the stimuli up. Maybe go to uh, the football field or the soccer field and they're playing a soccer game 200 yards away. Not where the ball's coming up your dog's rear end, but... So they see things, and then maybe encroach further, and then maybe in the parking lot of Home Depot, and then maybe in Home Depot. So I try to up, so this is one thing that happened with me where I got lackadaisical, like at the World Championships, I did not have my dog uh, in practice. I mean, Slayer, he was like, it looked like a bad BH dog. He was like, hey, world, I'm like, oh my goodness. I do not have my dog today. I had just been trusting that I had been in another, enough places where I was gonna have him. Because I have a training facility at my place. And there's people and everything, but he got used to a certain environment. So before DVG Nationals, I was very happy with his obedience at DVG Nationals. Guess where none of my obedience took place? On my field. I was in Home Depot. I was downtown Herlock. Every meal he got was high stimuli area. And I was like, wow, I did not know this was going to be a problem. So I'm preaching to myself, you guys. I just got complacent, thinking I had it. And Joel did not have <laughs> I had to like get spanked a little bit. So when you're doing your obedience, think, am I fair with this stimuli? Is this too much for my young dog? Like, okay, yeah, Joel, I've been teaching look for four days now. My dog's got it. Now come right by my dog's ear and start clapping. Well, that's going to be unwise. Um, so you're going to have to just be wise on how much you encroach on the stimuli. Does that make sense with that? Okay, I'm going to show, I'm going to grab Slayer real quickly. I'll drive down here. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with the play. And I think this will help Joel when I was talking about with the play. All right. So.